Mr. Bigley! Hey there, guys and gals, it's Grbeagly with another episode of Gaming with Grbeagly, and I'm once again playing another episode of Katawa Shoujo. Now, this game is getting really, really awesome. I mean, it's already been awesome, but every single time that they introduce a new character, it gets a little bit more awesome. So, last episode, we accidentally ran into Emmy, who physically ran into us and caused uh, Hisao to have a slight heart spasm. Uh, it looked like it might be tragedy, but he managed to get through it. Emmy uh, has no legs. She has prosthetic legs, at least, um, and she seems really bubbly and sort of shy and ran away real quick. Uh, and we also enjoyed some tea with Lily and Hanako, and uh, now we're in the classroom where Muto is being harassed by Misha about getting some plywood for the school festival. So let's continue from there. I wonder if you could get some temporary help. He switches to staring at me focusedly with a hard expression as if trying to say, Go make some friends. Uh, I guess I can give you a hand. I knew that's what he meant by that. <laughs> you can? Thanks, Ichan. You are really nice. She pauses, does a double take, and then points at me with her finger, yelping, Ah, and looking very puzzled. Come to think of it, what's Ichan doing here? Class is over. You should be having fun. We just had a little chat. Oh no, it's not detention, is it? Are you in trouble, Ichan? No, I'm not. Is he John in trouble, teacher? No, he's not. Muto sighs deeply, and I feel that I have to help Misha to get off the teacher's back. So, what do you need? Here's a list. I can try to find the plywood from somewhere if there's none in er, I can try to find the plywood from somewhere if there's none in the art room. She offers me the note she's holding. I take it hesitating a bit. I said I'd help you, but this has no implications on whether I'm joining the council or not. Ah, Still, thanks, Hee-chan. Try to be quick. We are in a stall-building streak now. We must hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> she bounces out of the classroom, leaving me and the teacher looking at each other with something that feels like a silent agreement. <laughs> well, there you have it, Nakai. You have something to do now. Please don't sound so smug. <laughs> Looking at the list with a number of items ranging from paint to plywood, all written with small, neat handwriting that is undoubtedly Shizune's, I heave a sigh. I'll be going then. Waving the long list limply at the teacher, I exit to the hallway. The cla- oh god, that freaking painting every time. The classroom's closest to ours are designated belonging to classes 3-1 and 3-2 on the right side and 3-4 on the left side, each door looking exactly the same. Further down the corridor, still with identical doors, are rooms that I didn't think were used for classes. I guess the art room is not a classroom as such. I carefully push open the furthest door and peek in. Oh, what a lovely art room. This it looks exactly like the art room I had in high school. <laughs> like, almost to a T. It's a classroom, but it seems rather badly kept or not in use. Am I in the right place? Desks and chairs are all around the room, a thin layer of dust settled on them. There are some easels in the corner, so at least this looks like the right place. The room's flushed in sunlight from the big windows, shadows creeping all over the desks. Specks of dust are dancing in the stagnant air, making the beams of light almost visible. Jokingly, I call into the empty room. Anybody ha- Something catches my eye and I stop mid-sentence. Oh! It's, uh, someone eating with a fork. Foot. Foot fork. Um, I'm assuming it's another uh, girl with a disability, since it looks like she has no arms. Sitting on a desk is a short-haired girl, curiously wearing a boy's uniform with a fork between her toes, a morsel of food stuck firmly on the end. The odd way of dining seems to be caused by her apparent lack of hands, but her presence here is what takes me aback even more. How did I miss her before? She's sitting in a corner very still, but I still somehow took her as part of the furnishing, or statue at first glance. Oh wow, that's not very nice, dude. I'm not being too observant today as a whole. The girl seems to be frozen in place, staring at me with her huge eyes like a rabbit in headlights. She's staring at me, her mouth wide open, ready to accept the fork. <laughs> I'm staring at her, my, my, my mouth wide open, suddenly remembering I didn't finish my sentence and trying to think if I should. This weird stalemate keeps us both stunned into silence, punctuated only by the wall clock ticking rhythmically. Excuse me, I got the burpees, guys. Oh my god, this one at least is early enough for Hopefully the burps get out of my system and I don't have them the rest of the episode. Hello. The girl stuffs the fork full in her mouth and is now staring at me expectantly while chewing. This is a bit awkward. Um, hello. I was told to pick up some supplies from here. 
for some festival stalls, I think? I didn't think there would be someone here. There isn't. That's why I came here too. She picks up another forkful. Doesn't that mean you're here then? <laughs> she raises her eyebrows as if she was suspecting my observation was false. You are pretty observant. I guess it does, but who are you? The girl's pretty straightforward, isn't she? I'm Nakai. Hisao Nakai. I just transferred in on Monday. I'm Rin. Tezka Rin. Rin Tezka. Okay, uh, which way am I supposed to say that name? <laughs> I think it's supposed to be, I mean, if it was Japanese, you say the, the last name, the surname first, so you'd say Tezka Rin. But I think her first name is Rin, so technically, yeah, that's why it says Rin there. I won't shake hands with you, but at least we know who we are now. <laughs> that's very nice. Wow. <laughs> Talk about freaking dry humor. Her deadpan manner of talking makes it hard to determine whether she's joking about shaking hands or not. It kind of bothers me. Joking about these matters doesn't feel appropriate at all. Well, I'm trying to figure out what's appropriate and whether this girl is. She seems to have lost interest in me and is now gazing yearningly back at her food. <laughs> so she's like really aloof. <laughs> Can I continue my lunch? If you don't mind me, I won't mind you. If you need to get your stuff, the supplies are at the back. Go right ahead, but lunch? School's already over for the day. Oh, wait. Oh, that's what his house said. Crap, I read it in the wrong voice. I always do that. <laughs> what word would you use, then? There is no word for a meal you eat after lunch, but before dinner, right? It bothers me very much, too, but I don't really know what I should say. I don't think you're supposed to eat a meal between lunch and dinner to begin with. <laughs> but I'm hungry now, and my delicious boxed lunch would go to waste otherwise. I have curry. It's very delicious. I love curry. Japanese curry is awesome. It's really, really good. <laughs> with much decisiveness, Rin once again picks up the fork between her toes, and with at least as much impoliteness, she points it straight at me. So, Nikai, what brings you to this place? Uh, like I said, I was told to look for these things. No, the school. From outside, you look fine. Is your problem inside? Damn, right to the heart. I mean, literally, right to the heart. I come to a full stop opening my mouth, but not getting a word out. I... I can guess. I'm good at guessing. Better than most people. Ren cuts me off before I can answer a question or skirt around it somehow. I don't know which I would have done. I froze in front of this issue again. I haven't even told anyone here about my condition. Or maybe it's only because it hasn't really come up. I do get the feeling that not making issues of this is a part of the social code here, as the teacher said. I wonder if the people here could relate. Probably not any better than any normal person could. I can't relate to Shizune's circumstances or Lily's either. Naturally, while I go through this in my mind or my head, Rin keeps considering what my condition could be with an over overtly contemplative look on her face. She puts her fork between her lips and leans back, looking at the ceiling as if the answer was written up there. A beam of light illuminates her face from the window side, creating a mask of dark shadow on the other side. I don't think it's anything in your head, and something in your guts would be boringly ordinary like this lunch of mine, and less delicious. The problem must be in your pants. <laughs> this messed up Sherlock Holmes kind of statement and the sheer lack of tact it was delivered with catches me completely off guard. I think I might have reeled back even physically as Rin's eyes widen in revelation and astonishment. So it's right. There's something wrong with your tackle, isn't there? <laughs> I think I like Rin. She's pretty awesome. Still partially in shock, but recognizing the need to reply something, I spit out the first thing that I can think of. No, nothing like that. I have a heart problem. Arrhythmia. I said it. More like blurted it out, but I said it. The girl in front of me purses her lips together and glowers at me, looking very disappointed. How boring. Trouble in the pants would have been much more scandalous. What's with this reaction? I'm sorry, or I'm sorry to let you down. I forgive you. Just, I collect people and a person with, you know, that kind of problem would have been really great. Collect people? People with different problems. Huh, so you just, like, go around asking people what's wrong with them? Pretty much. I see. <laughs> with little left to say, Rin resumes her lunch and the conversation dies away, but I keep thinking about what was said. It's the first time I told anyone else about my condition. All the other people have either known about it already or heard about it from someone else. Or didn't need to know about it, like every other student here so far. Should I have told it as a natural part of introductions? Is it expected of me? Hi, I'm Hasao. I have a very serious heart condition. 
Is that how I'm supposed to go around introducing myself from now on? As if our disabilities would define us. What a disgusting thought. Or maybe this Tesker girl just has an unnatural interest in such things. As I walk to the back of the room to pick up the items on Misha's list, a chance opens to study Rin from the corner of my eye. Her hair is burnt auburn, almost orange and cropped short. Long hair would probably be impossible with no arms. The boy's uniform and the lack of arms makes her look very thin, almost scrawny. She's not particularly pretty except for her murky green eyes which flicker restlessly from below her short bangs, even when she eats. Now I know he's being honest, but <laughs> he's like being really bluntly honest. I guess it's all in his head though, at least he's not like saying it out loud like, Hey, you're not that pretty, but you're kind of cute, whatever, hey, whatever. <laughs> the distance and the shadows make it seem like they don't reflect sunlight at all, but instead absorb all of it within them like deep wells. She moves her feet almost as deftly as a normal person would use their arms. However, I can see how this sight could discomfort people, especially while eating. It makes me feel a bit uncomfortable, at least. I hesitate to think about the word unnatural, but it's too late now, isn't it? I keep searching the cabins and shelves for Misha's things, but after enough time passes, the silence grows too uncomfortable, so I try to force some conversation out of this strange girl. So, do you always eat lunch alone? And this late? Or do you get the occasional visitor? Visitors! Maybe you are my first occasional visitor, but I don't always eat alone either. Sometimes I eat with a certain person on the roof if she's not horsing around. Horsing? She likes to do sports. Oh, and that's all I can think of to say. <laughs> Both of us fall silent again as Rin forks the last bits of her meal to her mouth. I look down at my hall and double check it with Misha's list. It seems I have everything except plywood. Um, so I think I have all the things now. That's very nice for you. Don't feel obliged to stay. I was about to take a nap anyway. You need to do whatever you're going to do with that stuff anyway, right? Or perhaps you like to watch girls sleeping. Uh, I'm not sure what to make of this, but <laughs> Rin looks serious. So she's obviously figured out that Hasao's like a little bit unsure of himself, and she just, I, I feel like she's just poking fun, which is awesome. Even if I did, I think I have to be going. Uh, I'll catch you around, Tezka. You can call me Rin. I feel that our relationship is, at this point, good enough to warrant this much. I was already turning to make my exit, but she draws me back in. Fine then. I'm Hasao. Then you are. Rin looks at me hard in the eyes, but then intimidatingly... Er, intimidate... Er, blah, 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 but that intimidating feeling you get when someone stares at you isn't there. It's like she's actually not looking at me at all. She blinks a couple of times, and I can't figure out why a pause like this just popped between us out of nowhere. Is she, like, high all the time? Is she on on the drugs? Is she doing the drugs? Smoking the weeds? <laughs> See you later, Hasao. I think she's just super aloof. I think that she just is like a, meh, whatever. I don't care. I'm just eating food. I'm gonna take a nap. You know, doing her own thing. You do you, Rin. You rule so far. <laughs> There's something like a tiny smile there in her face. Maybe. I like her. She's cool. And the only reason I know how to say her last name Tezka is because I watched this anime, Prince of Tennis, and it's the name of one of the characters. Otherwise, I would have thought it was Tezuka, and I know that's wrong in Japanese. And I know that they uh, try to mute the U a lot of the times when it's sort of like in the middle or the end of a word. So, you know, I'm not all dumb when it comes to pronunciations, I think. <laughs> I quietly back out of the room as I shut the door in front of my face. I whisper to myself, What an intriguing person. And from inside I hear a muffled sing-song voice. I heard that. <laughs> Whoa! What did she hear? <laughs> I jump at the sudden appearance of Misha, who had not heard approaching despite the completely empty hallway. Somehow she had gotten to jumping distance of me without making a sound. Creepy. It briefly reminds me of Kenji's nutty theory about a global feminist conspiracy, but I push that thought aside. Oh, and there's Shizune. Shizune, standing slightly behind Misha, looks aloof as she couldn't have heard the remark that drew Misha's attention, but Misha is visibly excited. No, wait, more importantly, who is it in there? There's no club meetings today. She tries to curiously peek past me, even though the door prevents her from seeing anyway. What are you doing here? It looks, you took so long that we had to come check what's wrong. That's no good, Hee-chan. She wags her finger at me scoldingly. I've, I found plywood, but everything else is still missing because you are tardy. 
Oh, uh, sorry. I, I got the things here. Was just going to bring them. I think you're up to some mischief, Hee-chan. Who was in there with you? I wonder. Nisha signed something quickly to Shizune, pointing at her own ear a couple of times. Uh, uh oh. Shizune immediately pushes her way past me and opens the door into the classroom. I just left. I can only imagine the shock she's experienced. With Shizune's diligence and attitude, the insolence of daring to deface school property by sleeping on top of it must be too much to bear. And indeed, she stares at Rin, frozen in place apart from the slight but noticeable trembling of her shoulders from suppressed rage, I'm sure. Instead of blowing up, Shizune just takes a few deep breaths, adjusts her glasses, and slams the door shut, turning to sign furiously at Misha. Whoa! She is pissed! <laughs> she is really, really pissed. Maybe she did blow up, but I can't understand it. She shoots a very loaded stare at me, too, as if it was somehow my fault that Rin is sleeping on one of the tables. I hope she's not getting any funny ideas about the reason of my tardiness. Hello. Rin's voice comes from the other side of the door, and it takes a few eye blinks to realize she might have trouble opening it. <laughs> I open the door to find Rin directly behind it, looking at us with a half-interested, half-sleepy face. Rin's my kind of girl. She's sleepy all the time, just like me. I'm always exhausted. Probably because I stay up until now. It's four in the morning and I'm doing this. <laughs> but I do it for you guys, because I, I honestly, I love this game. It's awesome. It's so easy to put energy into because I really enjoy it, and I'm so glad that you guys have been enjoying it as well. Hello. <laughs> Miss Tezka, what do you think you're doing? You absolutely are not permitted to use school property for such uh, disgraceful activity. It sure is suddenly very crowded in here. I didn't know I was this popular. It's hard to say whether she's happy or unhappy about this turn of events. At any rate, she ignores Shizune slash Misha's scolding, so they have no choice but to drop the issue. Shizune taps Misha's shoulder, points at Rin, and makes some quick signs. Popularity aside, please don't do that anymore. Anyway, how's your project going? Will it be done for the festival? Rin looks at them blankly, apparently at ease under the pressure Shizune's cold stare is putting on her. I keep wondering about that myself, too. Uh, <laughs> and? We'll think about it harder. <laughs> As Misha signs her reply to Shizune, her face turns into an unsatisfied frown. Miss Tezka, please try to take this seriously. It'll be a disaster if the wall looks like someone threw up their lunch onto it. <laughs> Rin nods assertively. We'll think more seriously. <laughs> Misha actually giggles at that, but Shizune doesn't, not even after translation. She just shakes her head, takes the materials from me, and takes off with Misha in tow. Rin frowns thoughtfully as she looks after the retreating student council duo. How rude. It's true, though. I must finish my project before the weekend. There will be dire consequences if I don't. The end of the world as we know it. Like, weekends usually are, but more dire. Much more dire. <laughs> Maybe I'll postpone my nap to unforeseen future. <laughs> I, love, I love her. I, I love her dialogue. It's just really funny. I'm about to ask what project she has and what are these apocalyptic consequences, but she walks back into the art classroom. Since you have nothing to do, would you give me a hand? The paint can. Uh, the paint can doesn't fit into my bag, but I need it. She kicks lightly at a huge can of paint that's lying on the floor next to the table she was sitting and sleeping on. Let's out a dull clang. Being the gentleman that I am, I naturally pick it up, my lady. <laughs> Heavy. Yeah, sure. Where do you need to take it? Away. And with that, she takes off to the hallway, me and the paint can following since there's little choice for either of us. The hallway's quiet and empty now with Shizune and Misha gone, so we two leave towards the stairwell at the other end. Every 10 or 15 or 20 steps, I have to change the can from one hand to another because the thin handle cuts into my palm. At least it keeps my arms from tiring too fast. I hate that about carrying paint cans. If you guys have ever carried a paint can before, even when they have the little handle thing on them, like the hand guard on the handle itself, it sucks. They're like, I mean, it really does like just cut into your hand. It presses into it and it hurts and I hate it. Screw you, paint companies. <laughs> There's got to be an easier way. Rin strolls on beside me with an uneven pace that I have trouble matching, or maybe I'm walking weird because of the extra weight. Seems one of us is constantly walking too slow or too fast, and I can't figure out which. 
Two flights of stairs below, Tribble appears in the form of the head nurse and his fox-like grin. And guys, I'm going to end it there on a cliffhanger to find out what the hell the nurse wants from us. Because, uh, yeah, <laughs> I needed to find a good cliffhanger spot, and that seemed perfect. So anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I really, really did. Rin seems like an awesome character. She's super, super aloof and goofy. And I really do kind of like the fact that she's like, eh, whatever, like laissez-faire attitude. I think that's what it's called, right? I don't know. I took French. Whatever. But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to hit the like button, share the video, and favorite it. Also, be sure to subscribe to me if you guys haven't already. For those of you who have, thank you so much for all of your support. You guys are the best in the world. I love every single one of you and as always it was great seeing you bye bye ow it hurts all right we're gonna swap a Roonies. i don't know what's gonna be strong against him so i guess i'll just throw out johnny depp uh, oh i can't be switched out because i'm wrapped oh damn it okay well we'll fury swap his ass bam bam you wrapped the wrong guy, Ekans. You're gonna get fury swept only twice, you son of a bitch.